Welcome. It's our first panel of Paris Fashion Week, and we're going to be discussing Gareth Pugh. So, what a wonderful show to start with. And what a fabulous panel. I have Colin McDowell, Daphne Gillis, and Camilla Morton. Hello. Wonderful, welcome wonderful. back. Well, thank you. Thank you. I've been in Milan, so <laughs> me coming back to my first panel since the London ones. What did everyone think of fashion season so far, and what's everyone excited about for Paris? Well, what did well. you think about physically being in the land? Did it make a difference being there? Um, you know, I had this weird moment where actually I was sitting in one of the shows and I st you guys had a live panel going on that day and I thought, you know what, I couldn't really see the bottom halves of the looks because it was kind of badly seated. And I thought, you know, I actually preferred viewing this sort of online in a more digital way because I got so used to it. And yeah. that you, just that circus, you know, when you go to a show and there's like, millions of people outside and all the random kids with their cameras and it's nice on one side but on the other side you're just like kind of eclipses all the fashion I think mm. but I think this is a marvellous way to watch I mean we have cake we have a cup of tea we have champagne <laughs> and it's all there for us we don't have to try to find a taxi in Paris no. at the end of it or anything like that you know, it's exactly. just marvellous so who are you excited about for Paris Colin? Um, I'm uh, very excited about this one yeah. So I think this is a real, real talent who actually hasn't actually begun to give us all the things he's going to give us. Mm. Wouldn't you agree? I, I agree. think he's got so, he's so much to go. Mm. He's very, very, very special. Obviously, I want to know what Eddie Slaman is doing, mm. and I want to know what Ralph Simmons is doing, because in a way, these these are the guys who are the pivot, which will change it in one way or another way. Mm, yeah. I think that f fashion, particularly in Paris, is very interesting at the moment. Because it can go in so many different ways. It seems to me that after the terrible business that happened to John, there's been a sort of hiatus, and now we're moving towards a new future. Mm. Would you agree? Yeah, I hope so. I, I hope think. So. I think also this season, because of what's happening at Dior and, <coughs> and um, not Kelly on at Dior and Salon, it's going to affect everything else. It's going to have a ripple effect because everybody's yes. just building up to this crescendo, and so much is hanging on that pivot that I think after then everything should slot back into a, a new rhythm, mm -hmm. I hope. I hope. But there are interesting things happening. I understand that, that Eddie is going to do, have his studio in LA, yeah. not in Paris. Now, if that is the case, that's obviously going to weaken Paris as a centre, which makes me sad because, to me, I've always said, I've always said that you know, if all the other fashion cities disappeared and Paris survived, it wouldn't matter because it mm. all really comes yes. from Paris. So I'm worried a bit in case it's going to be disseminated across the globe, and particularly to America, because Americans do tend to um, capitalise on things in a certain way, which I don't think you can do with Paris, and certainly not with Couture. I understood, though, Eddie's working out of L.A., and the whole studio, but the studio is taking direction from L.A., but they're also in Paris as well, ah, so right. it's a split studio. Mm. Right. And I think they're going to see how it plays out for this time, and then... Right. See what happens. Yeah. yeah, see how it... What, what do you think is so special about Paris? Maybe that's a great question for you, Daphne, because you've been to some of the shows and you've worked designing someone like Gareth, you know, on a, on a personal level. What do you think it is about Paris? Because Gareth obviously went from London to Paris and there's that kind of I heritage. I think it's the architecture and I think it's the, the history, even if, even if the people have changed and it's sort of, and, and, I mean now more than ever with the, the new government, it's a, a lot of the French are sort of having second thoughts about living in Paris, but you know the, the structure of Paris still remains, and I think those wide boulevards with the, oh. those beautiful buildings. There's nothing, there's no, no city really that compares to it, yeah. and um, and it has got, it has got all the petit mains who, li who live there, um, fewer and fewer, alas, but um, they have, at the very best end, they have they have it all there. I just hope they don't just finally kill. Mm. Anyway, I don't think so. I'm, no, well, I'm optimistic. <laughs> yeah, I'm optimistic. I am, very much. because I think it's, it's going to change. I think things yeah, are just, think, yes. we're just at the big On the crux of yeah. something really big. Something really big. But it's I agree with you entirely. It's like a cardiac arrest. They, the, the, it's <laughs> Salomon and Dior, and they need to sort of like pump the heart started again and, and get, it, get it going again. Do you, so do you think Paris is kind of... We've all kind of hinted at this. Why, what do you think's happened? There's been this kind of, I don't know, a stayed vibe, perhaps? I don't know what. There's a black well, shadow yeah. hanging over it. Well, it's just been taken over by corporations. Yes. I think that the, the, the heart and the spirit of 
Paris always emanated from couture. Mm. And as couture has got less and less important, they've been looking for a new role, as it were. And I think what is exciting is that young people are coming in and they won't look at couture in the same way and mm. it will move forward, you know, and that's what's necessary. I agree with Daphne. I mean, it is the most beautiful city in the mm. world. I'd like it. Someone said, I can't think who it was, David Hockney said, he wrote to someone and said, Paris is lovely. It would be perfect if only the English lived there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's rather nice. oh and I do think, you know, that the other thing I feel about Paris in terms of talent, fashion talent, it is the most accommodating and generous city in the world. Mm. They're all Anybody can mm. come because if they've got the talent. Think, I can't think of one French designer. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, mean, I, can, I mean, I can think of a French designer, but not in charge of a major house. No. no. Mm. I and mean. I'll tell you a story that not many people know, only people as old as I know this, um, because I was told this by somebody <laughs> a long time ago. When there was all the trouble in, in, in um, Spain with the the, the the war and everything, Balenciaga left and he came to London. Hardy Amy's told me this. He came to London looking for a job. And he went all around all of the houses, fashion houses, there were quite a lot there, even control houses. And they all said, Oh no, your interest isn't good enough. I mean the greatest one of the I greatest believe it. couturiers That's of twentieth century. You know, he chose London and London rejected him. Paris, of course, mm. took him in immediately. So do you think for someone like Gareth that moment from going to London and starting showing in Paris, do you think that Daphne you worked with him, do you think that kind of signified a change? Definitely. What Def well, I mean, you're 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 up in your game if you go go mm. to Paris. It's um, it's 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 at a level of its own. I mean, I think all the other other cities, they've, they've got great things to offer, but I think Paris is always the one that um, swings it in the end. I mean, for a designer, mm. um, I don't. I it's it's it's. It's very strange. I mean, maybe it's something. It's so, like I don't know, like sort of Epidaurus and being able to drop a pin there and here. It's just yeah. the topology yeah. of the. I don't. Yeah. It's the, the essence of the place. The place. Just the place. just yes. seeps in. Look what happened to Alexander when he went to Paris. Yeah. Um, what he he just blossomed there. Mm. I mean, that you know, he he learnt so much from being. Well, he learnt his trade. Yes. In a way. Really. But there's also I John did. Yes. There's also the, without sounding critical, like Paris is an incredible fashion city, but there's this lingering kind of danger there, I think, in a way of the pressure of it. And you see that with someone like Alexander McQueen, of just kind of the pace and the pressure and the prestige of Paris, which I think can threaten some young designers in a sense. Do you think that's the case? I think it's become the case. I don't think that was always the no, case. I, I think I, I, when I first started going <laughs> to shows when I was really yeah really young um, uh, it, it, you know people didn't really know the difference between couture and pret a porter I mean they, you know actually th there was and there were no cameras there in fact the same cameras that were covering the shows were actually war reporters <laughs> normally yes, I mean they were exactly. the same people I mean yes. it was the, it wasn't exactly. a different um, they do you know the, the war in Beirut one week and then they do sort of yeah exactly, the exactly. Yeah. Um, but, and, and very few pictures would, would come out but it's, it's become like this because of the huge um, the vastness of the corporations that own so many different labels and the battles that are going on way way up higher than the designers but of course if you're an artist it filters down and it makes them very very uneasy mm. and it can be it can be very disconcerting for an artist if they feel anything that's not I don't know I just, it's just there it's is some magic to Paris but it's quite a, it, it's a, it's a, it's a funny city because it has all the all the ateliers and all the artisans and all of the sort of magical elements and you you get couture there like and all the skilled people that you couldn't find anywhere else in the world because there's such a pride in passing on those skills but then there's a slight twist to the chalice and it's it's a funny game to play but I do think though that now more people are like Gareth is going over there to embrace the the skill over there and the artisans over there and I think 
I actually don't think it's a bad thing, Eddie, working from LA because it almost yes. it almost well, scatters yes. the seed yeah, a little I'm bit not further. Saying it's bad. I'm just interested that it's happening. No, no, no. I know, but I just think you know maybe maybe it needs to have a new harvest and the seeds need to be scattered even further so that yeah. new artisans can find new places to. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and I can see why it wants to be in LA. Yeah. Like. yeah. If you think of the people who've gone from London to Paris, there's John, there's Hussein. There was Lee, and now we've got Gareth. They're all people who are incredibly strong mm. and know what they want to achieve. And I think want to be, in a way, left alone, not told what to mm. achieve. I think there are far too many designers in London who are waiting for somebody who is not a designer necessarily to tell them what to do, mm. you know, to organise their careers. I don't think that anybody, you know, think of an artist, think of um, Lucien Freud or Picasso or whatever. They don't want to want to organise their careers. They know where they're going, and that's what I think is special, and that's why I think that he is in absolutely the right place, mm. absolutely the right place, because he has strength, commitment, conviction, and he's got something to say. Mm. I've never I've talked to him many times. I don't know obviously as well as you do, Daphne, but I've talked to him many times. He never actually talks about sales. No, oh, he never. He's a real it's artist. Not, it's not yeah. what it's about. No, he's, a, he's, a proper, well, prop, he's a proper artist. Yeah, and I think that's fabulous. So, so there's this one. famous comment fabulous. that Sarah Mao wrote in one of her reviews. She said um, he's never sort of sold one dress almost seven seasons in. And, and that's I think not true. I don't think it's true in the same way. But it was kind of this line that got thrown about about him, which I actually don't think was a criticism no. in some ways. No. Because it was almost no, it could be either way. Exactly. Kind of yes. A lot of people no, say it as if... Yes, but, but is there something beautiful I, about that? Though? I think there's something beautiful about it because he d he follows his own tune and he doesn't he doesn't let people sort of influence him. Mm. He's got it all all in his mind and he has the um, he has the he has he has the means to do it. I mean, he knows how to I mean, he knows how to make that a reality. Mm. Yeah. Which so many people don't. They think that um, it's about that it's that it's easy and it's not. Mm. But to be imaginative and to have the craft, that's a very, very explosive combination. And I think yeah. also to have such a kind of a true idea, whether it's in terms of your aesthetic or in terms of what you want to say, as much as he's tried various different things, there's always this kind of core element to his work, which has remained. He's not trying to reinvent himself. And you get the sense that there's this kind of consistency to him, which is part of the reason I think that he's done so well, is you, you never get the sense he's kind of it's showy, it's always, it feels very authentic. Um, oh, the clothes are the man, really. Yeah, the clothes are the man, and, and also they're very wearable. I mean, they, they, they can look like they're not, but in fact, they're incredibly comfortable. And, yeah. and, and I think sure perhaps they they've got even more. Oh. This is some of his previous oh, right. This is yes, new yes. stuff. Yes, but, of course. But Daphne, you've, you've worn his clothes, and I want to ask, how does it feel to wear you don't. I just inhabit them. I just sort of get into that. You know, you. It's, I don't know. I never know how it feels to wear anything. It's just like, it's just it's just an ongoing process of. of Are you telling me you put them on and forget about them? Yeah. Really. Yeah. Gosh. But I think there's something to his. But I mean, you know, it's going to be right. That you just know you're yeah. not going to go yes. wrong with. You just because yeah. I know him well enough, and he knows me well enough, and it's just it's a, it's intuition. Mm. The, you're not going to think, oh gosh, am I looking a bit... His clothes are quite... They're, they're structured. Yeah, they're very well, structured. Very, yes. But is there something, when you wear them... Because I think they're the kind of clothes where people would look at them and think you'd wear them and people would look at you and that would kind of become a theatrical element to it. Whereas actually there's a very personal element to his clothes as well where they're almost like armour. And is, do you find it more that it's about how it makes you feel rather than it's how other people react to you? Yeah, I've, I've, never, I've never really thought about how people react to me. I mean, I've, sort of, I've been forced to think about it slightly in the last year or two but um, I've, I've never I've never been very self-conscious about the way I dress and I don't I don't think about it too much but yeah. but but Gareth stuff does make you feel I mean you, you know you, you know that it's very it's it's well if, if you're if you're on that wavelength you just you know it's going to be right it's yes mm. but I don't think armor's the word I mean confidence maybe but women who need armor are not going to wear Gareth Buse clothes. <laughs> you know, they need something which encapsulates what they're about inside mm. the dress. I think. I think, well, I think that's the thing, the thing about all clothes in a way. I think. That yes, um, all good clothes. All good. I mean, I think that the fashion is something that is 
you know, you, you go through seasons but, um, and there's this, and there are lots of lovely things, but it's actually inhabiting a look which is, mm. is what sometimes is missing. Mm. Some, sometimes you sort of think that people are sort of into this music or their, you know, their, their opinions. And in fact, actually, they're just dressing, it's like this, they've put on the wrong costume, it's really strange. And they're actually sort of... Completely wrong different. No, but it's terrible, <laughs> yes, and it's like, I, I, I mean, I, it's very strange because I always gravitate towards the, because I mean, for example, I wouldn't, you know, I know what music Gareth's into. I mean, just mm. knowing those sorts of things about people, know, you know, that it's going to be okay yeah. because it's all of these things dovetail. I mean, in yeah. my opinion, mm. Gareth has quite. A Sorry, go on. I was going to say he has quite a sort of a a select team that kind of work around. We talked a, a little bit about this before we started the stream. You know, he has Simon who does his sets and this kind of support yeah. network, which it's it's about sort of creating his vision with the music, as you said, but also with things like the set. Like we've got yeah. incense and. Um, today and that kind of beautiful atmosphere and do you think that's part of the reason his success kind of surrounding himself with you mentioned the word earlier uh, like-minded yeah, people i don't yes. think he surrounds himself I, people, I think people they are attracted. attracted and want to work with someone who has creative and artistic integrity mm. so you know, i'm sitting here and i don't know why i keep thinking of lawrence of arabia yes now, it's not quite lawrence of arabia but there's a marvelous scene with lawrence of arabia and omar sharif and omar sharif says something and he says something and he says it is written and um, Peter O'Toole says, there is no such thing. You write your own. Now, this is why he's a Lawrence of Arabia yes. person. He doesn't believe there's anything written. No, he's there writing. So many designers want journalists or stylists or whatever to tell them what is written do. and yeah. what should we do. Yeah. That's why I, I admire this man. In all so, so do I. He's also he's amazingly confident and yet incredibly shy, uh, shy and yeah. understated. But he really knows. Oh, kind. I agree. But he really knows what he is, where he is, and where he's going. Mm. And I wish he'd show us off his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing that he's got kimono. Yeah, there's a lot aspects. of aspects. Do you want to go and ha yes. start having a look? We're getting yeah. the first few looks in. We haven't got them all yet, so we'll start from the beginning. Oh, wow. Oh, we're not seeing the actual show as it's happening. No, no, no we're just seeing oh. the doing photos. Well, images well, why is that? He doesn't live stream. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, doesn't he? Why is he? He has done... Okay. He's done right. films in the past. Beautiful films. Yes. Yes. Beautiful yes. films of the roof. Yeah. Yes. Actually, uh, that's something really interesting, which I'll touch on before we start looking at the clothes, which is how he's really embracing kind of new methods of showing fashion, whether it's with a film or he's done a lot well, of collaborations. We need them. Do you think that's a positive thing? Yes, oh, yeah, absolutely. definitely. And he's got a radical mind. Mm. He'll strip away all the things that we've always done, think can never be changed. Mm. And he'll do it in a different way. Mm. He's one of the future ones, there's no doubt in my mind at all. He is one, one of the ones who's going to craft a new way of looking at and making and wearing clothes. But he's the only one from London who does that, the only one. What's so new about what he does in your mind? It's his attitude that is new, the way he presents things and what he does with material. I think he's a genius with material. Mm. He really understands it, you know, so he doesn't stick on well, I hope he's not going to stick on a digital print because there's a space there and he doesn't quite know what to do with it. Mm. I am so longing for someone to ban digital prints <laughs> because they're, they, they just make people lazy. You know, it's dead easy. I could design. But you can never accuse him of being lazy. No, 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 no he's no. not. Let's see some more. And it's his soul. It's what you f I feel that every time he g puts out a collection, it's part of his soul. Yes, and it's mm. not done lightly. No, it's not. But it's not for the. It's not for. The, the buyers, it's for, it's for his art. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. You can see the smoking. I love this. Yeah, that would look great on you, Daphne. <laughs> <laughs> see, this wow. is Balenciaga done modern. It's beautiful. You know, this yeah. is the sort of cut that Balenciaga was doing a very long time ago. He's not copying him, he's reinterpreting a way of making women look glamorous and beautiful and I think totally in charge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These are women who are not tough, they're just quietly and totally in charge, so oh, it's beautiful. Mm. Well, something beautiful. orthodox about it. It's absolutely lovely. You mentioned you said he doesn't 
care what buyers think, and he, <coughs> he presents his, his collections in a way that's very authentic to him. But is that something that's sustainable? Like Camilla, maybe that's a good question. Is that something that works? Because designers... But I think it's very easy to be very schizophrenic and change your style and your, your, your um, identity every season. I think he's, what he's done is, from the beginning, he's you know, set his what, you know, mission and he's very true to who he is. And I think, I think his clothes are quite empowering. I mean, these, you know, they're, they're very... Here, they're, they look soft, but they're, they're very, as Colin was saying, they're strong, mm. strong women. And I think that because he's dancing to his own tune, he's not, you know, playing the game of, of courting. You know, he's focusing on the art and the actual fabric and the creativity, mm. not dancing around, chasing buyers, or this, that, and the other. And they will come to him, and that's not part of the game. You shouldn't, mm. you shouldn't sort of... Fashion has got itself in a little bit of a muddle at that's the true. moment because it's, it's courting things in the wrong order. It's building a house upside down, and it's starting off with the buyers mm. and the sales figures rather than the, the, the raw yeah. sequins mm. and fabrics and pools of yarn yeah. and cutting and pattern cutters. You know, those are your, tre your real treasures are your pattern cutters mm. and, and your yeah. ateliers. And, and I think that people forget that and they're so eager to get a t-shirt made in Topshop that they forget the yes. beginning yeah. stage. Yeah, and also, yes, and, and how it yeah. felt to be, to be yeah. to, you've got to remain true to that first feeling yeah. of why you did it why in the first place. Why you did place. it and why you've become a fashion exactly. designer, not an artist or exactly. a musician or... Exactly. Yeah. It's Love. absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. And I, I think that has his clothes have softened, particularly over the last sort of few seasons. And I'm not, I don't think it's a change in his aesthetic in any way. I think he's just exploring new avenues, which is looking. I think he's refining his proportion. Yeah, like yes. it's a really distinct silhouette, but it gets more and more precise, I suppose. Would you wear this, Daphne? <laughs> do you love it already? I love all. Of, I, I do actually. I mean, is it hard to watch a show of somebody that's a friend? Isn't no, it? those are the fr those are the ones I love watching. Those are the ones you love watching. I'm I can, I'm very bad at going. I'm, I'm not. I can't go to a show if it's not a fan. It's oh, really so you strange. have to have an emotional yeah. connection, connection to it. Yes, it's strange. I love that one. I'm getting a bit of a loop with our image or something. Yeah, I thought that all my eyes were going yeah. funny. No, no, that's it's great. Look, that's a laser cut. Yeah, laser. Yeah. Leather. I mean, these are perfectly wearable clothes. Completely. It's just and they're very flattering. Absolutely. The shoulders are perfect always yes. on his. That's what I like. I always like a good shoulder. Mm. Well, from yes. There, he does a, yeah. a great strong Yeah. Well, that's oh my gosh, that'd be easy. But also, you can see that it's so beautifully oh. made. Yeah. We have to get a surprise sooner or later because Carlson's notes say that he's brought in red. He's brought in red. I think he I'm has very interested in that. Oh, I love that. These are so beautiful. So I beautiful. It'd be lovely if we could see the images from 360 because yeah. well, that's what I want to do. You know, yeah. they don't do yeah. it just from a front view, do they? Well, I it's so it difficult for them, and, and yeah. it's and it's like it's so difficult. That's why we, that's why Gareth yeah. likes um, to make films, is because oh, so you, you, can you see, see the whole thing. Mm. Because if you're just sending something off down a runway, you can only yeah. see yeah. a part of it. And it just depends on how the model's yeah. moving so at that moment, or yeah. and and I mean, what what shot the photographer took. Yeah. It's very complicated. Yeah, I mean, because it, it's just a two D cutout. Yeah. I mean, it's yes. but, you know, yeah, you need to right. see the full where it's been draped and how it's yeah. been cut and where it's spit. There's yeah. something about movement as well. I was well. going to say, like it's yeah. a we can't see the movement because mm. properly cut clothes flow with the body yeah. Yeah. and make their own space around the body and everything. Mm. And that's what we're missing here, unfortunately. I went to see, um, he collaborated with, um, he did a ballet, uh, he did yes. Carbon Life, I don't know if anyone else saw no, it, it was it. incredible. And he designed the costumes for it and mm. just seeing his clothes move in with something like that, it was mm. incredible. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. He did, it was kind of like his stealth bomber suit that we had downstairs, very structured and just absolutely incredible. And to see them move in, in that kind of way, different to just seeing a model walk. And that's what's so beautiful about Ruth's films, is even a runway doesn't do his um, Runways are very difficult, I think, for, for, for Gareth's clothes because they, 
they're so much more than that. Mm. Um, but it is, you know, it's the format at this point. At this yeah. point. Has but he I done do think a film this year as well? Or he has yeah. the I think he's uh, going to do one. Yeah, I love that makeup as well. I love that makeup. That's almost yes. like oh, yeah. that, that If we go back to that, that oh, last that's grey one, that, that is cut like a Madame Grey would be cut. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So beautiful. Look at that. It's beautiful. And then the red comes oh, here's the red. Beautiful. And Carson said it's, it's a return to this red and the reintroduction of red to Gareth's palette. Beautiful. Oh, red goes just grey with black. And yeah. white. <laughs> just beautiful. <laughs> it's such a good one. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful, and I love the veiled faces. I think that's a What, uh, go back one, what's the drape around the neckline doing there? What fabric is it there? It's too far mm. away from my eyes. It looks eyes. like a kind of, it looks like a chiffon. Yeah, yeah. chiffon. It's yeah. got like a chiffon that's kind of like of the end, yeah. frayed at the end, it's and it looks like, it's like a scarf that's flowing yeah. over the back. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And then, yeah, I love that. It reminds me of that sculpture. Oh, the, no, there's the, 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 did you, there was a fantastic show at the Met last year of, um, of, of um, sculptures on, um, from their sculptures, but they had beautiful sort of draping over oh, the faces, the oh, in marble, oh my marble. goodness, like oh, that, really very, very beautiful. There's a definite femininity oh, to the, it's kind of just absolutely beautiful, absolutely. but I think in a way there's something with Gareth, I think he, he kind of got the wrong kind of publicity when he started, like people really hammed up this kind of club culture element and how all his clothes were so sky fi and really structured and always kind of, he, the press was always about his balloon pieces, which obviously were really key to his aesthetic, but it's not all that he does. No. And I think in part perhaps some of his more recent collections with these absolutely beautiful sort of more flowing um, pieces are, are a way of saying, look, I'm I'm about so many different things. And, well, he's also about tailoring. Mm. Yes, cut, absolutely. But I think maybe, I don't know him, but maybe that's why he moved to Paris, to get away from the sort of, like, the mm. cliched expectations. Because yes. London... Because no London one more sensible than him. I mean, yeah. he's, but he's, you know, he's got his head squarely on his shoulders. There's nothing sort of... Um, oh, no, nothing yeah. airy-fair. No, and, there's no. And, and he's completely, you know, he's completely dedicated to what he does. And yes. he's not a sort of... It's, it seems strange to even think of him as club culture because he's so sort of like he's almost monastic in his work. Mm. Yeah. But he got so many comparisons when he started to like Leigh Bowery and to also Alexander McQueen, that kind of theatrical art house club culture sort of set, and like he was the new generation of it, which well I don't think is. Well, I think I'd be, I'd be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think he decided the way in London. It's to make a big statement like um, like Lee did, you know, this Highland rape and everything. Yeah. Shocked everybody, but everybody suddenly knew him. You know. Well, that's great. That was what he did when he started yeah. out. Haven't seen that for but As you said, make such a big time. statement. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was completely unique. I'm going to tell you a story which is really quite chaining. He applied for Fashion Fringe. Now, I don't judge Fashion Fringe, thank God. But <laughs> they said, this guy doesn't know anything. His drawings don't tell you anything at all. And what I realise now is we didn't know how, they didn't know how to look. He was telling us about a completely new way of seeing the body. Mm -hmm. And it frightened, it frightened the, mm. the, the committee of, of, of selectors. No, 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 no. And it's my greatest sorrow that I didn't, well, I didn't know either, to be honest, but I would have loved to have mm. been able to say. But I came Gareth to a Fashion thing. Fringe thing with Gareth when John was there. Yeah, we did. Yeah. That's the right. Lectures. Yes. And I came, yes. with, yeah, it, it, yes. he, he, um, no, but he's such a, f he, no, he's, 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 he's so, he's marvellously, he's marvellously sort of, he, he doesn't, he'd, he'd, he'd do it, I mean, he's, he's always there, you know. Yes, mm. what I love about him is, He's really quite tentative as a person. Yes, very. But he's incredibly strong. And these clothes come from somebody who knows exactly what he's going to do, just as Vivian Westwood did, mm. just as John did, and Lee. And he doesn't need anyone to say, there's a good boy, it's lovely. He knows he's a good boy, yeah. it's lovely. And that's what I like, that sort of confidence. Mm. And that's what's gone, it seems to me. Well, I'm really interested that, that you mentioned the fact that he applied for Fashion Fringe because he actually he did receive sponsorship from Fashion East and then New Gen. But I wanted to ask, do you think someone like Gareth coming along now would he be picked up by something like Fashion East or 
or a new gym because there's such a focus now on you know no, kind of tying on commerciality and no. Well, for a start, he isn't doing digital print, so <laughs> there, wouldn't be, there wouldn't be a bit interested in him, you know? Mm. No, I don't think he would, because I think we've become so mundane, almost parochial in the way that we view fashion in London. And I'm very I afraid that in a few more seasons, people will say what we always used to say about New York. There's no point in going, there's nothing to see. It's all the same. But I mustn't, we're talking about but it. But I think I sometimes when somebody's, sorry to interrupt, but I think <laughs> yeah. sometimes when somebody's so unique, it doesn't matter whether they've come at the right time or the wrong mm. time, they will... They make they their will, own time. They will yeah. make their own it's time. It's the Lawrence of Arabia yeah. thing. Yes. Yeah. Nothing is written, yeah. you know? Yeah. I really and I also that. think that, I think that, sorry, <coughs> as you said, that the house has been built the wrong way up. I think we're going to suddenly see the house being built the right way up yeah. quite soon. Because yeah. I think a lot of the people that have been... Uh, a lot of the, the sort of focus groups and all these things that was really sort of pointless when you when you're dealing with people with talent. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think it, I think I think people of between the ages of ten and twenty five, they're seeing that there's something wrong with all of this, yeah. and they they're only going for the authentic things. And they're going and the, for and the blatant commerciality of of some things. I, d I just think I think they're just gonna. I mean, I think. Some of the some of them are going to get a nasty wake up call. I also think it's the really original ones that will last. The yeah, some of, some exactly. of the processed cheese designers at the moment won't stand the test of time. Mm. You, yes. you, it's the ones that are original that you will remember. You will remember. Yes. Yes. But why are those processed cheese designers? Why are they getting such a forum at the moment? Why do you think that? Because we're nervous and we're in a transition. And so while you're in a transition, you have to just go for a, a ready-made meal until you get ready to try a new dish. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm so excited. I think it's going to be so good. There's <laughs> a lovely food analogy there. <laughs> 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 You're like, that sounded good. <laughs> 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 no, it's excellent. Yeah, I was going to say, should we do? Should we see some more clothes? Yeah, let's see. Oh, yes. See that. See that. Look how beautiful that is. I mean, really, I mean. Oh, just to see it turn. You can see it. You can see it. You can see it. It's liquid. I love the makeup. Yeah, it's Alex Box who does the makeup. It's just absolutely. I love Alex Box. She's so great. Yeah. yeah. Look lovely. how precisely that's shredded. That is absolutely beautiful. Just imagine that movie. And Ruth has to do a film with it. Imagine that. I'd love to know what music is playing. What a pity we can't hear. It, the music Why, is. Do we know? Yeah, yes, we do. Is it something special? It's an a cappella version of. Oh, Roy that's right. Uh, Roy Orbison song, song yeah. Silent Spanish. Yeah, a lot. a cappella of him singing, crying. Yes. But I Carson said it's, it's replaced the Stomping House soundtrack, and I think it's quite interesting because even through the music, you know, he's trying to, s it's this organic approach of doing something different yes. with well, both music. Well, a bit like there was set. incense and, and he was softening the Palais de Tokyo with incense and, and mist. Having it a cappella, it's all quite haunting and it's got the mm, softness of the haunting. line. Yes. I've got so much to ask, but I'll wait till we've seen oh. all the looks. That's lovely. That's beautiful. And it's so true to him as well. And it's and it's and it's very chic as well. Mm. I mean, very you can't chic. say that that's that's um, sort of you know out there clothing. Oh, I mean, so I mean, it's it's very classic. Mm. Yeah, it's not at all frightening. No. no. Many so many things that people people there. think that everything's frightening unless it comes from I don't know. That is just beautiful. Oh. It's and the craftsmanship in that. Yes, yeah. but what I love, it's it's very controlled. It's all slight variations on a very th strong, strong theme. Mm. I like, like that. Like a musician, you know, yes. this is what exactly. Bach does. You know? Exactly. Or whatever, From the you know. Prelude, it's a, it's a, yes. And then it's the fugue, and then it's, yeah. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's oh, wow. Just gorgeous. I think that's the closing look. <laughs> no, not quite. Just beautiful. Oh, that one's that's beautiful. Lovely. Yeah, that's really great. You can take that when you learn your flamenco. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're so nice run away with the gypsies. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. It's going to be so great. Never to be seen again. <laughs> that's so great. Is this what we were expecting from him? Uh, I had no preconception at all. 
but I think it's incredibly strong. And it's, it's really, it's a silly word to use, but and it's, so, it's and masterly. In my mm. opinion, it's masterly. And Sorry. what's so great about his things is you can wear one piece with something else. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're all, it's, yes. it's, they, they're incredibly simple, but so sort of, they're so, um, they're so well made and so sort yeah. of, you can, you can kind of mix them with other mm. things and they go with everything else he's ever done and other things that you mm. may have mm. lying around. But maybe this ties into what Camilla said about the move to Paris, is this idea that he went there to kind of show, you know, how incredibly well made his clothes were and to show his incredible talent. Because in London, I think all the hype was around the c yeah. this, like, club culture. That he kind of got put in this box in a way. And then by going to Paris, it was almost him saying, it's like you said, you go to Paris, you say, I mean business, you know, and he was showing. Yeah, well, like Frank Sinatra went to New York to make it there. I think <laughs> yeah. if you can show that you can cut in Paris, where they're the most critical pe country because they're better at everything than everybody yeah. else in the work. Yeah. If you can yeah. stand on your own against yeah. Paris yeah. Couture. Yeah. I think also there wasn't that he was he terribly... He should have the Couture house. Yeah. Oh, look, there he is. Lay! That's Gareth. That's, that's, that's his closing look. And then oh, he's so picture. sweet. Oh, that's Gareth. Should we give him a round of applause? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Gareth. He's so adorable. But just beautiful. And just to look at that closing look again. Just it's so beautiful. Lovely. Really beautiful. Just absolutely gorgeous. Very happy with that. I yeah. want to go to a word, because we talked about it halfway through, but I didn't want to interrupt the, the close, which is, when you said the word haunting, and I thought it was really interesting, because a lot of people have associated with Gallagher as kind of quite a dark aesthetic, and that he's always making quite a dark statement, which I mm. don't... There's a definite sense of lightness, I think, to this, alongside the... The, the haunting nature of it. But do you think that's true, Daphne? Do you think he is trying to say something dark? Or people no, even throw words like gosh, sinister. No, absolutely not. Either, people people always think that. I mean, yeah. they sort of think that about anything that sort of that they don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's the minor key, really. It's the unanswered question. It's the yeah. Leonard Bernstein lectures. It's, it's, that, it's what people don't understand or you can't categorise. When you look at something of, something of rare genius, people think it's dark. Mm. It's just because it's sort of because they can't understand, but the arts have always been. I mean, haunting in a way. is in kind of intangible. It's yeah. this sort of you can't but quite it's touch it. Key. Yeah, it's so. But a lot of the artists are yeah. that. Yeah. I yeah. actually I don't think agree. I don't think they're haunting at all. Don't I think don't. they're incredibly practical clothes, and certainly I don't think that black. Is it a desolate colour? No, I. You know, I think black's a marvellous. But marvelous people, but color. people, peop, most people, you're, you know, we we know that, but most people, most people but they think the black, idea. or they think they think it's haunting, yes. but they just don't understand the sort of the beauty and the lightness yeah. of the darkness. Yeah. I see this as I can't absolutely practical. Me yeah. too. A fashion show. Oh look, you there see, are so many go, no, 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 go, go yeah. back on Let's the hemlines the close-ups and that will give us a chance to see the fabrics more closely. Just beautiful. So you're already rocking the trend already. Definitely. <laughs> what is this? Is Gareth? <laughs> I know, I was like, you're so on it. Actually, he has, in a sense, taken over Lee McQueen's yes. position as a brilliant manipulator of leather. Yes. Mm. You know? And I love the chopsticks and the hair, you know, his yes. take on yeah. them. Fun. Yes. It is fun. And the models all somehow look just a little like him, <laughs> you know, with oh, the hair is. and everything, you know. He's so beautiful. He He's a very so beautiful, beautiful man. He's got an incredibly beautiful face. Gosh, those are gorgeous. But those inside and out. I wonder. Lovely. I love that. There is nothing mundane in this. Mm. No. Nothing. And more importantly than that, even that is, there's nothing unconsidered. No. It's right. really been designed. Yeah. In mm -hmm. Every inch has been designed. And it's no. not a copy of anything else. No. Is it? Yeah. These sleeves are absolutely beautiful. What would you like to see the future for, for Gareth B? Would you like him to stay, always doing his own thing? Can you see him? Moving to a different house. Oh, I think you could move to to take over a house. Certainly. Oh, for sure, absolutely. Mm. I wouldn't want him to leave Paris. 
I wouldn't want him to be squashed by any uh, sort of. I'd like him to be left free. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the trouble when you go to a big, big house. You know, you become yeah. a sort of butterfly slave, on a way. wheel. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know whether he should go near a house. I think he should stay true to where he is. You know, I think he well, should. Well, there's one. Uh, there's one house. You know, there, yeah. are, there are one or two that are still all right, but yeah. I wouldn't yeah. go near quite because a lot of them. <laughs> The thing that's certain is Gareth Pugh will do what Gareth Pugh believes in, yeah. not what no, other exactly. people advise. That's what's so great. That's what gives you great confidence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he's very, he's, he's very wise, and he's not, yes, he's he not, is. he's not he someone is. who's, he's not he's in it thinker. for the short term. I mean, no. he's, this is him. Yes. Absolutely. And his life is invested in this, and he doesn't oh, throw away his life right. lightly. I love how they all have tears. It's so beautiful. And I think a lot of things come his way, which is very true to him, you know, whether yeah. it's art, the artistic collaborations he does with sort of costumes for various sort of productions, whether it's things like the Mac collaboration he's done. I think a lot of things that are very true to him come to him because he hasn't done this kind of, I need to get a t-shirt in top shot. But also, kind of yeah. stay true to him. And I think people that might not have understood him or doubted him at the beginning or had not thought the collections were for them at the start, as you see that he's staying true to <coughs> what he's trying to say, I think as he's established his signature more and more, mm -hmm. and he's stayed sailing on his course, they've come to him and he yes. hasn't courted that. Yeah, and he stayed so really nice. true, so right that. And I think it, it's easy to forget that it won't always have been a, an easy course to stay sailing on, you know. When the best start. courses aren't the easy course. Yeah, exactly. It's always a rough one. Mm. When you see the close up, <laughs> it's <just> <laughs> <laughs> Go to the go to the waffling hems. Those were beautiful when yes. they rippled. That's the next one. Nice. It'd be so nice if the picture Just could move. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in 35 years of being in the fashion business, I've never once been tempted to wear a woman's garment. But if I wanted to, these are the ones that I would wear. Really? Yes. So Absolutely. I can expect to see you in that. No, you can't. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not interested no, you in wearing you women's clothes. No, you staked your claim now. But, um, but they have that sort of integrity. Yes. yes. But also some pieces of clothes I hang on my wall because yes, they're too, they're beautiful, too beautiful, beautiful to just put away. I you have know. to have yeah. them up as pictures. They or are, yeah. exactly. Because they are pieces yeah, of clothes. Just just people don't understand yeah. that. It's you not can't a lock it in a cupboard. You have to have it out there. Exactly. Or wear them. Exactly. So our general consensus is a big congratulations. Okay. Yeah, yeah, a big, huge hit. Yeah. And it's given a new, I think, with seeing Gar Gareth's um, straight from the sort of like the process of Milan, I think it's brought, it's, it's, it's taking the panels that we're doing. I think we've got a, new, a sensitivity and it's sort of given a new tilt to Paris. I think, mm. you know, I think things were becoming quite formulaic and this has shifted things yes. into a creative gear. Yes. What a lovely note. Good place to stop. Shall we give Great. him another yeah. round of applause? Yes. Oh, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs>